This week on Maker Update, a NeoPixel puzzle project, tickling the toe beans, machine learning plushies with microbit, and a cyborg funhouse. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, back again with another Maker Update, the show for people who enjoy making cool stuff. How are you people doing? I hope you're having a good summer. I had a chance to get away and go to Oregon for a little family vacation in the middle of a heat wave and a wildfire, and still it was good to get out of the house. I've got a good show for you. Let's get started with the project of the week. The Nova Jigsaw Puzzle is Naughty Bremer's Fab Academy Finals project, and it's gorgeous. This is an interactive puzzle made from laser cut plywood and acrylic. As you place each piece, the puzzle board lights up to let you know if you've got it right. Inside, you have a grid of 212 NeoPixel LEDs that get diffused through the milky white acrylic. An AT tiny microcontroller wired up to some multiplexers handle all the interaction. In this case, it's sensing the correct placement of each puzzle piece based on the contact between the pins and the board and conductive copper tape on each piece. If the piece is correct, the copper tape bridges the pins, signaling the microcontroller to light up a new section of the board. It really is beautifully done, and Naughty was generous enough to include a thorough write-up on how it all works, along with the code, bill of materials, and design files. More projects! On Adafruit, another fun collaboration between the Ruiz brothers and Liz Clark. It's a four-button mechanical keypad shaped like a cat's paw. At the center is a display that cycles through a sequence of bitmap images with each key press. In this case, we get the party parrot, but it can be customized to any image sequence you want, just like the keys can be mapped to any key you want. Alternatively, you can set this up as a MIDI keypad for triggering sounds and music software. The hardware uses the tiny and inexpensive Cutie Pie board, which is programmed using CircuitPython. The enclosure is all 3D printed and snaps together with no screws needed. For more adorable interactions, from Tiffany Seng, I learned about a recently published web app called PlushPal that she developed at the University of Tokyo with support from the Kawahara Lab. Using this web app and custom firmware that you install on a microbit, you can turn any plush animal, or any object really, into a talking, interactive toy. What's so cool about this is that it's using machine learning to interpret subtle gestures that would otherwise be missed by typical sensor threshold monitoring. Things like waving, or jumping jacks, or dancing, or clapping. Once the software learns these gestures, which are unique to your stuffed animal, you can then associate them to trigger different sounds that you can record. It's a really cool idea and a great toolkit for educators or parents looking for new ways to engage their kids with microbit. But there is nothing on this show that I want to play with more than this shop window installation by Nicholas Roy. Nicholas has hacked an old RoboSapien toy with a Node MCU board, and not only does the board allow the RoboSapien to be controlled remotely using a web app, but it also acts as a server and hosts the entire app. This way, people just need to walk up, connect to the robot as a wireless hotspot, and then type or scan the address for the web app. That alone is a pretty cool trick, but what I really love is the whole interactive cyborg world that you get to move around it. There's a world domination station and a dance club and a cyborg hair salon. There's big time Pee Wee's Playhouse vibes going on here and I love it. And you can find all the code needed to recreate it using the link included in the description. Also, if you missed it, go check out episode 210 where I talk about an even larger installation by Nicholas called Smart Fairy Tale. It's so much fun, and also very well documented. Now for some tips and tools. If you're into the idea of hacking old Robo Sapien toys, in the last project, Nicholas links out to a list of all of the IR codes and commands for each movement, including some secret and undocumented codes. Instead of sending these over IR, you can use a microcontroller to send a PWM signal right to the Robo Sapien's main board. That's what Nicholas did. On the Cool Tools channel, I've got a review of a uniquely well-built blind rivet adapter that you can use in any power drill. If you like the idea of rivets but find them to be too much work to place manually, give this a look. 
Also, if you love the look of old TVs, you have to see this guide by Jam Hamster on how to create custom rounded acrylic faces for flat LCD screens. This is a way to give any LCD screen the look of a vintage CRT display. You learn how to cut, grind, and polish the acrylic, what kinds of acrylic to avoid, and then how to prep and apply optically clear adhesive to permanently fix it to the LCD. It's definitely a bit of a process, but as someone who loves the bulbous look of old TV screens, I can absolutely imagine doing something like this for a project someday. Liz Clark has a great tip on desoldering pins from your project boards. Pins are great for prototyping, but sometimes you just want to eject them when you're making the final project. I've done this a hard way too many times and ruined boards in the process. Last week, Tyler showed you that amazing vintage fractal vise. While Chris Borge made his own version that you can 3D print for yourself, not only is it a fascinating design, but it's also a great look into Chris's process for reverse engineering the design from patent drawings. On Tested, Kate Sabaker shows her technique for creating her own alcohol-based inks from old markers. Not only is it a cheap way to create some beautiful and unique inks, but it's also an environmentally friendly way to reclaim material that would otherwise go into the landfill. If you stick around to the end of Kate's video, you'll also see her and Norm use these inks on hollow, 3D printed resin sculptures, and the effect is really cool. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, Lady Ada has a great tip on what to do if a surface mount electronic part you're after is only available in a tube packaging instead of a pick and place ready reel format. It turns out you can get parts taped using a third party service. She uses one called Argosy. This way she can order parts from DigiKey in a two packaging if that's the only way they're available and then have them shipped to Argosy and they'll do the work of moving the parts to the tape and shipping them back to Adafruit. I had no idea this was a thing. And that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, leave me a comment if you like. You can get on the Maker Update email list so you never miss a show. A big thanks to my patrons on Patreon and to the excellent people at DigiKey Electronics for making this whole show possible. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.